Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church, where our mission is loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose. Whoever you are and however you're joining us today, we're so glad you're here. If you are here in person, we invite you to stay for coffee and lemonade and a chance to get acquainted following worship. And also, if you're new or visiting, we do have little connection cards in the pews that you can fill out and drop into an offering box on your way out so that we can get connected with you and get to know you better. We do invite you to take time to read the insert in your bulletin and to read, like, like when you get the weekly email on Fridays, click on it, open it up and read it. Also read your newsletters and this is a great way to keep in touch with what's going on at the church. We find that sometimes uh, we put the information out there and uh, uh, we just need you to read it. You will also note, if you do, that we are having an amazing concert here one week from today at 3 p.m. You have to be very careful how you say this, the Sipe Sheets Duo. Yeah. Uh, trumpet and organ, it is going to be marvelous, and it is free, and we hope that you will come. Well, friends, it is good to be here together today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. spirit and truth. Living water, flow through our worship this day. Quench our thirst for your wisdom and truth, that we may grow in faith and love. Fill us with streams of your spirit, that we may know you more fully. Amen.
be seated. We are invited to drink of Christ's grace and talk with our God, no matter our history, our shortcomings. Come to the living water. Christ will hear our prayer. Lord, you know who we are. You know everything we have done. We thirst for things that will never satisfy us. We commit ourselves to things that will never last. Still, you offer us the gift of living water. Still, you offer us the gift of eternal life. Forgive us, O Lord, and give us this living water so that we may never thirst again. Let us now continue in silent prayer. Amen. Christ, the living water, is here, washing over us with mercy and filling us with hope and renewal. Rejoice and be glad, for we are renewed with love and made whole with grace. Good morning, young disciples. I forgot my prop. How exciting is it to be here today? I mean, you know that first hymn, My Canticle Divine, May Jesus Christ Be Praised. And then watching these four walk up is kind of like watching the A-team just about ready to engage. It's pretty exciting, you know. I brought my favorite water bottle with me today. This is, what's well, for one, it's the most expensive water bottle I've ever bought in my life. Uh, it goes on my bicycle. And it's insulated, and it has one of these fancy twist tops so that it won't leak out if it falls off your bike and shuts, so it shuts the water off or turns it on, that kind of thing. And what I really like about it is it's really big. It holds a lot of water. With this water bottle, I can get out on my bike and I can get at least 30 miles and not run out of water. That's pretty important when you're on a bike not to run out of water because you get thirsty while you're riding. You know what it's like to be thirsty. You know, your mouth starts to get a little dry and you, you really can't even talk if you had to and your throat starts to feel a little bit gravelly and... You can fill this with cold ice water, and it'll go a good two hours before that water completely uh, warms up, so you always have some cool water to go with you. It is no fun to get thirsty. Did you know our bodies are almost 60% water, and our heart, I understand, I'll have to ask these doctors later, I know there's some of them here, but I understand our heart is almost 80% water pretty amazing so you don't want to dry up right it's just not healthy it is no fun without fresh water we aren't going to survive very long you know we can be physically thirsty but we can also be spiritually thirsty spiritually thirsty is like when our heart and soul, our inner side, feels thirsty. 
And sometimes we may try to quench that thirst with a lot of different things. You know, I, I may think, God, oh, if I can just have anything I want, a new car, uh, a new computer device, I'm going to be happy. And so we try to fill our hearts with a lot of things around us. And it may work for just a little while, but at the end of the day, we still kind of feel thirsty. Here in a little while, we're going to hear Scripture where Jesus is talking to someone about that very fact. This person has been filling their lives with things thinking they're going to satisfy the thirst in their soul, but it never quite gets there. And Jesus says to this person, if you drink of the living water, you'll never be thirsty again. And what Jesus was talking about was God's love. If you drink deeply and receive God's love, that will will quench your, the thirst of your heart. And, and that, that he is telling us that all we have to do is listen to Jesus and receive God's love. Receive that living water. And that is very good news for us. So, I'll quench my physical thirst with this bad boy. But it takes God's love to quench the thirst of my heart. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for creating us to be loved by you. Help us to hear that good news. Help us to receive that good news. And help us to live into that good news each and every day. Amen. Everybody have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Sunday. Let us pray. Living God, through the readings of the Scriptures and by the power of your Spirit, may we hear for ourselves the good news and believe, because of your word, that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is Psalm 63, and if you would like to follow along, it is located in the Old Testament on page 527. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. For those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. Before our second scripture reading, if today wasn't glorious enough with all the beautiful music, make sure you receive one of the little fellowship goodie bags on your way out today. It is full of little treats that will make your day. And now our second scripture reading, which is the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. You can find this on pages 94 and 95 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. 
So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon, and that means it was hot. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, And who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ten years ago, I got to go to Kenya with my friend David Zioka, who pastors Nima Community Church in Olathe, probably one of the only congregations in Kansas that worships in both English and Swahili. David is from Kenya, and he regularly goes back to his home village to do projects like build a clinic, start a church, construct an orphanage, Little things like that. And on this particular trip, we stayed at his family's compound in the village and helped with a two-day clinic where people could see real doctors and get the medicine they needed at no cost. And this is rural Kenya, so no running water, no electricity. And one afternoon, our big adventure was going down to the river to get the family's daily supply of water. So we got the donkeys, got the cows, the dogs tagged along, and we went down the dirt road through the beautiful Kenyan countryside to the river. On our way, we met other villagers heading down to the river, and we joked how, oh, it's rush hour at the river, because we'd have to stand back sometimes while a herd of cows trotted down the road. And I was startled at how small and young the children were who were leading the animals down to the river. When we got there, the river was almost dry. There was nothing flowing, nothing gushing, nothing trickling. Although we were told the river did fill up during the rainy season, but this was the dry season, so we had to climb down into the dry, sandy riverbed and walk across it and go to one of the little pools that the river had left behind. And we took turns squatting down and used a cup to scoop water out of the pool put it into a pitcher, and then when the pitcher was full, we would pour it into one of the water storage containers that was strapped to one of the donkeys, and then we would just do that over and over again until we'd gotten all the water that we needed. We made bad jokes about walking on water, and somewhere I have a video of two bulls getting in a fight And as they fought, they inched closer and closer until finally uh, you see me realizing I need to get out of there, and I drop the camera and run. So it was fun. And the whole process start to finish took, 
you know, maybe a couple hours. And so while it was exciting and fun to do that one time on a beautiful day, imagine doing that every day, maybe twice a day, to get something as basic as water. So I got to experience firsthand what millions of people around the world have to do every day, maybe even a tiny glimpse of what the woman who met Jesus at the well went through every day. Yet as soon as I got home to Kansas, it was so easy to slide right back into taking water for granted with my long hot showers and multiple loads of laundry each week and I just wonder sometimes how many thousands of dollars I have spent on bottled water in the last 10 years since I went to Kenya. This week we continue our six-week sermon series on the different actions that Jesus lists in the parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew 25. Feeding the hungry, giving a drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, caring for those who are sick, and visiting those in prison. Whenever we do these things for one person in need, it is the same as doing it for Christ himself. And when we neglect to do these things, it's like ignoring Christ standing in front of us. Last week, we talked about feeding the hungry and the sacred act of sharing food. Sharing food is God's love language. We could have done hunger and thirst together. I mean, they really do go hand in hand. But Jesus listed this as a separate action. And it brings to mind for me that one of the last things Jesus said as he hung on the cross was, I am thirsty. So today we will explore what it might mean in our world now to give a drink to someone who is thirsty. And when I say our world, I mean most of the United States, where clean running water is a blessing we can take for granted. The water crisis in 2014 in Flint, Michigan, was disturbing because we expect endless clean water to just come out of the faucet whenever we turn it on. Even in places like Los Angeles, where residents are more mindful of water consumption because of drought, limited supplies, higher costs in that huge population, they can still get clean, safe drinking water. So it is hard, I think, for us to relate to the real, ongoing physical thirst that underlies a story like Jesus and the woman at the well who begged for living water so she wouldn't have to keep coming there day after day after day with her big, heavy jar. Sometimes giving a drink to someone who is thirsty really does mean giving a drink to someone who is thirsty. We do that here at First Presbyterian Church in a very simple way by making sure that when we stock our blessing box each day, we always put bottled water in there along with the toiletries and non-perishable food items. We have handed out bottles of water during parades when parades have passed in front of our church. Church members like Dan Pauls have traveled with living waters for the world to install water purification systems in villages and places like Honduras so that a whole community of people can benefit from drinking cleaner water and getting sick less often. You know, Presbyterians and other people of faith have often risked arrest and their own safety and even their own lives as they have tried to save the lives of migrants who are crossing the desert. They leave jugs of water and emergency supplies in places where they hope migrants might find them. And they do this because whether or not it is right for someone to try to enter our country illegally 
it is surely not right for them to die for a lack of water in the desert. And they have taken to heart Jesus' words about giving a drink to those who are thirsty. I think sometimes giving a drink to those who are thirsty might mean being willing to do with less water ourselves. Did you know that the average American uses between 80 and 100 gallons of water every day? Every day. People in India use less than 40. Our supply of fresh drinking water is decreasing as demand and population are increasing. And it is expected that in 50 years, many parts of the United States could see their freshwater supply reduced by as much as a third, which would mean some pretty serious water shortages. And there are things we can do that sound really small, but they help in a big way. Things like taking shorter showers, and, oh, this is the big one, not rinsing our dishes before we put them in the dishwasher. That can save 20 gallons of water. And I know it's hard. We want to rinse them so bad. A way of life in which we are more mindful and careful with water may be coming. And it may have to so that everyone has enough. Sometimes giving a drink to those who are thirsty takes on a different meaning. The word thirsty can also mean having a strong desire for something, like when we say somebody has a thirst for knowledge. This past summer, I attended part of the Sunflower Music Festival over at White Concert Hall, and I got to sit next to our own Dr. Walt Menninger one night and he made an interesting observation. That evening, the, the audience was giving a standing ovation to absolutely everyone, all the performers. And I'm one of those people that thinks standing ovations are a bit overdone. Uh, like, we really need to save those for the truly, truly outstanding, knock your socks off, extra special, extra excellent kinds of performances, not just everyone who does a good job. So all these standing ovations were kind of getting on my nerves. But Walt pointed out that 18 months of pandemic living had left people just craving, craving live music, craving concerts, craving being in an audience again. And that the standing ovations were really more about just the joy of being there and being able to express that joy to the people who make music for the rest of us to enjoy. That music festival was quenching the thirst of all these parched music lovers, and they couldn't help but overflow with appreciation and applause. In Psalm 63, we hear the language of thirst to describe that deep, overwhelming yearning for the presence of God. And in Matthew 5, in his famous Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught his followers, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. For some, the longing for God to set things right is so strong, it's like a physical thirst. And just like our bodies are made to feel thirst, so we know when it's time to drink, our human spirits get thirsty. But sometimes we're so busy, we don't even know how thirsty we are, kind of like when you take a dog on a walk on a hot summer day, and you know they're just having such a good time smelling everything and taking in the sights. And it's not till you set that bowl of water in front of them and they stick their heads in there and lap it up like it's the last water on earth 
that you realize how thirsty they had become. Sometimes giving a drink to someone who is thirsty means helping them get the spiritual hydration that they need. It means teaching people how to pray and praying with them. It means reading and pondering scripture together and telling them how much God loves us. It means building friendships with people and affirming their beauty and their giftedness so they can begin to recognize and love the spirit of God that is within them. It means sharing the beauty of our Tiffany windows with all the visitors who come to see them and then being patient with our administrative assistant when she does not answer the phone because she's busy escorting visitors in here for that purpose. It happens. It means offering words of encouragement when someone's spirit is dry and cracked and parched. Sometimes the best drink we can offer is a cup of weak, bland church coffee, maybe with a donut hole, accompanied by a listening ear and a readiness to accept someone just as they are. Who do you know who is thirsty today? What are they thirsty for? How can we give them something to drink? Amen.
help us give a drink to those who are thirsty by participating in our morning offering. You can do that by placing your gift in the offering box on your way out or donating securely online at donate.fbctopeka.org. Called to live in hope, let us share the blessings we have so richly received from God. Eternal Spirit, source of healing and wholeness, bless these gifts, that they may be Christ's promise of living water for the world. May all who are touched by today's offering be bathed in the goodness of God's life, grace, and hope. Amen. Please be seated. As disciples of Christ, we are 
made part of a royal family serving the King of Kings. Let us now go to God with our joys and concerns, we pray. Lord of living water, you create us to be loved, and you love us with all your being, and you invite us to live together in that community of love. We humbly acknowledge our blindness to that love, our slowness to receive and respond to it, to bring that love into our midst, to offer the good news of that love to others. In our failure, we defer the dreams and hopes of others and ourselves, and we remain thirsty for you. Pour out your love and mercy upon us, Lord. Wash us clean and make us into true disciples. Guide us out of the alleyways of doubt, stubbornness, and selfishness onto the pathways of assurance, peace, and hope. Enable us to place our whole trust in the living water of your love. Fill us with your living water and give us a vision of that love. Teach us to live into your peace, compassion, and justice. And empower us to build your beloved community where everyone is welcomed and valued. Where all your children know wholeness and well-being. On this day, we thank you that we have been filled with your vision for life. May we join together on our journey of faith, going forth to make this vision a reality. Hear us now as we pray with one voice the prayer taught to us by your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go out into the world, let us bathe in the river of God's love, swim in the waters of Christ's baptism, ride in the currents of the Holy Spirit, share God's living water with a thirsty world, and feel the blessings of God well up within us into a spring of eternal life. 
Go with God and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen.